All right. Welcome everyone to um, our Thursday call. Uh, today is August 27th. I am so happy to have Audrey Diaz Robles back on our call. And before I ask Audrey to introduce herself, uh, because we have some new team members, so even though some of you may have heard her story before, I would like for her to tell um, a little bit about herself so that the people who've never heard her story get to know a little bit about Audrey. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Audrey myself. Audrey has been a Team Beachbody coach almost three years in November. She is an elite five-star diamond coach and a two-star diamond in her second business center. She is uh, a member of the New York Market Council. She is also um, a member of the first ever Latin Coach Advisory Board, and that is something that um, is put together by corporate. Um, Audrey is also uh, a success club legend with 33 consecutive months. And um, I think many of you saw that Audrey will also be on the um, Llamada Nacional in Espanol on September 1st. So make sure that even if you don't speak the language, you show up. <laughs> I'm not sure I speak the language. <laughs> I'm sure you do. So we'll just make sure to translate for those that don't speak the language. But we got to uh, show her a lot of love and support. So I'm so proud of you for achieving all of these um, successes in your uh, Beachbody career. But tell us a little bit about, you know, how you got started into uh, the coaching world. I just want to say thank you for having me on the call. Thank you for all of you guys that took out your time to listen to me tonight. And uh, all of those things are wonderful, but they all happened one day at a time. And I know for a fact that Gabby's going to be able to say all of those things next year, as many of you will also. Um, so I began coaching a month after my challenge group. I got into my challenge group. I started with Shalene Extreme. My youngest son was about six months old at the time, and I knew I had to lose the weight. But I knew realistically with two little boys just 20 months apart that I wasn't going to get to a gym. So I, I joined a challenge group and I started feeling amazing. And since I was already, you know, on social media, everything I would share, I'm like, look at my flex, flex body pick. Oh my God, look at my pants are loose. Like I was coaching already without realizing it. So, um, I asked my coach like, well, I want Shakeology at a discount because also my husband and I were living paycheck to paycheck and I love Shakeology, but you know, I, I found it pricey. So I actually charged my challenge pack to my credit card. I charged my Shakeology and I signed up for what I thought was going to be the discount. Even though I was always looking for an opportunity to make extra money without having to leave the house, leave my boys. Um, but then the week that I did sign up as a coach, my husband lost his job and it became just me. And, you know, for those of you that are mothers, for, for those of you that are go-getters, and I know, you know, you guys are. I, my parents are well off. I wasn't going to ask them for anything. And I remember they called me and I was like holding back tears and they called me and they're like, if you ever need anything, let me know. And I'm not going down like that. You know, I really believe if it's up to me, if it's up to B, it's up to me. So I all of a sudden had this beach body opportunity and I got to work for me. What it was at first was just being able to buy groceries without putting it on a credit card. Uh, cause that was almost maxed out at that point. So to me, I'm like, I'm just going to help people because people were already asking me what I was doing. And I was so in love with fitness, so in love with how I felt the confidence that I had. And I wanted all women to have it. So I was like shouting it from the rooftop. So it was, it was pretty easy for me in the beginning because of the confidence with which I spoke about the challenge group and the accountability, which I always mentioned. Um, so I became a coach and it's been amazing ever since. I'm not going to lie and say that it's always been great. I say amazing overall because of the way it's changed me and what it's done for my family. But, you know, we all have really bad days, but I firmly believe, thank God to personal development, that you give yourself one day to feel bad about something and then you pick yourself up the next day and you try harder. Um, but that brings me into pretty much the first thing I wanted to talk about. Can I 
get started, Gabby? Or Okay. So Gabby asked me to speak today to you guys about closing challengers and closing coaches. And what I found in you know, the almost three years that I've been doing it is that the process is pretty much the same. It's just a, your technique is a little different. So as I was telling my story, I, heard, I know that I said to you guys that I wanted, I was a big proponent of what I was doing. I wanted to shout it to the rooftops. I wanted to go out there and let everybody know what I was doing. And that's the first thing. I know that when you become a coach, especially if maybe you're not even at your goal weight yet, it's kind of scary to put yourself out there. You know, you feel like, what are people going to think? But it doesn't matter because what matters is that you are feeling confident. You're probably feeling happier than you ever have in a while or if ever. Um, and you should want people to feel that way. So that enthusiasm needs to come from you. So it, it goes back to the three vital behaviors. When you're doing the three vital behaviors and they're all working in sync with one another, you're happy, you're confident. Because even if you're not at your goal weight, just the endorphins get you going. So when you're, when you, I, I, I like to call this being on the offensive and being on the defensive. So on the defensive to me is that you're following the three vital behaviors. So when people look at you, it's like, oh, I see she's working out. Oh, I, I see that she's talking to people. People are like commenting on her pictures. Oh, she's posting about quotes that she's reading. But when they come, when they, when you go out there and you're projecting what you have, being on the offensive, it's like everything, everything works together. So people look at you and they want what you have. People have to want what you have. So the only way to get that is by having the three vital behaviors so that you're fulfilled enough to be able to give something to people. So that's, that's really primary because if you're not doing the three vital behaviors, you can't really go out there and, and invite people to your challenge group because you need a challenge group yourself, you know? So don't worry about maybe not being where you want to be. Just focus on what you're doing because for a lot of people, it's, it's just seeing you do every day. It's not the perfection. People aren't attracted to the perfection. If anything, people are probably turned off by the perfection because they feel like that's un unattainable. So if you're doing your three vital behaviors and you're getting your workout in, you're happier and you're just putting out this positive energy to people. And if it's funny because before I became a beach body coach, my news feed used to be filled with the word with the, the phrase FML. Like everyone I knew was posting FML. And now when you become a beach body coach, it's like Coaches are your only friends all of a sudden in your newsfeed. So it's such a change for me because I only see happy, up uplifting people on my newsfeed, and that's awesome. But for everybody else, we're like an interruption on that negativity. So, really, my first tip is if you want to close somebody, a challenger or a coach, you've got to be on your personal A game. You have to be offering something incredible to someone because people, people aren't going to join you because of the products. They could, they could go on Amazon right now. They can go on eBay and get it for cheaper. They can call on, you know, call the phone number on the T25 commercial and bypass you completely. But they want to join you because they see something in you. You have something to offer. You look happy to them all of a sudden, you know, so that you have to be on your A game right there. So then when you're talking to them, when you're inviting I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you guys about my background before I, I work with my dad currently, run the family business. Yes, I still have a full-time job. Um, but before then, I worked in entertainment marketing, which is basically publicity. So I would get hired. I worked for a small, a small marketing agency, but we would get hired by like Epic Records, MTV, Bravo, and we had to launch online campaigns for record releases and for TV shows. And what I had to do was like, they basically, they would come to me and there'd be, they would say, I want to be on the homepage of TV guide. I want to be on Yahoo on AOL TV. I want all that placement. And it was my job to get it. So it's kind of like, and every week I had to submit a report with the screenshot of every placement. So it's kind of like hitting success club weekly. You know, and that's why I think I've always been successful in this business because I know the pressure of having to perform and having to, to get the get, you know? So I, what I did was that I thought to myself, okay, so uh, I worked on one of JLo's Spanish albums. So, you know, I thought to myself, what websites should JLo be on? And I made a list. 
of those websites. In the same way, you guys have to make a list of everybody that you know. Everyone that, you know, I want to say everyone who you, I'm sorry. Yes. Can you block the door, unlock the door and we can get No, you guys need to go to bed. Tomorrow. So, you know, when I was working with J-Lo, it was like, okay, well, what websites would she belong on? But with Beachbody, I, I could tell you guys 100%, it's usually the people that I don't think would ever be interested in this that have totally surprised me and have told me that they want to join a challenge group or they want to be on my team. So now your list is even broader. So you're, you know, you guys are business owners and that's something that you have to take very seriously. This isn't a hobby. This is an actual business in which you could be earning six and seven figures and there are coaches who are. How do you get there? You get there by treating it like a business. So right now I want you guys to put on your marketing hat. In marketing, you have to reach out to people. So we already know that you're advertising. You're doing your personal development, so you're advertising how amazing you feel. But now let's talk about the marketing aspect of it. You have to reach out to people. So I would make a list of all the websites that I needed placement on. And in the same way, you guys make, need to make this list of everybody that you know. The memory jogger in the back office, it's amazing. Because you'd be surprised at the number of people that you know, and you're not even realizing it, because you're just trying to think like short term, like who can I invite right now? You know, let me keep bothering my cousin because he said that maybe this month he would buy a challenge pack for me. And that's what a lot of amateur coaches do. But you guys aren't amateur coaches. You guys want to make this into a, a big deal business. So you have to make that list of everyone you know. And then you guys need to actually invite. You know, I don't, I don't post things and sit around waiting for people to say, hey, I saw your post, are you still looking for somebody? I have to actively go out there and create relationships. So when I worked in marketing, and I'm a total introvert, total introvert, part of the reason that that put me off from that network was that after work, I had to go to like cocktail events and networking parties, and I had to go and brush elbows with like the editor of Vibe magazine or, or whatever because I needed to build that contact. So in the same way, like you guys have to go through your Facebook feed or your Facebook friends feed and think of people that you haven't spoken to since like high school because, oh God, no, I haven't spoken to them since then. We have nothing to talk about. Open up relationships again and just be like, hey, I haven't, I just realized I haven't spoken to you forever. How are you? You have to establish those lines of communications again and get to talk to people. For me, inviting, I'll be honest with you, inviting is never an invitation off the bat. I never just think about somebody and say, hey, how are you? I was wondering if you want to join my next challenge group. For me, inviting is an invitation on a, to a deeper relationship. So any time in a month, I have people in different stages of that pipeline because I want to rekindle the relationship. And then when you do that, especially on Facebook, face, Facebook's algorithm will put you more in their face. So they're going to see what you're up to. So then when you keep going in the relationship, either you can say, hey, you know what? I was just thinking about you. I don't know if you saw my last post, but I'm starting a challenge group on September 7th and I'd love for you to join. Or they will see your post because now you're coming up more often and the, the lines of communication are friendlier and you can make that invitation. Now, what, once you establish those lines of communications, you have to write it down. It's not like, yes, I have to remember to follow up with those two people that said that they would buy next Friday. You have to write it down. Like I'm personally not really um, a digital person for writing down my list, but I keep this notebook with me at all times. And every time that I connect with someone new on Instagram, that I connect with someone new on Facebook, um, I write them down. I write down their name or their screen name if it's on Instagram. And I write down, like, what did we talk about? Was this person interested in losing weight and having more energy? Was this person interested in becoming a coach because they want to stay home with their kids? I make a mental note, and I know when to follow up. Because probably 95% of the close is in the follow-up. You know, think about you guys sometimes when you get a message. You, we get so many notifications. We get messages, and a lot of times, I don't know if you're like me, have you ever thought you hit send on a text message and you realize you didn't 
And then it's like a week later and you're like, oh, I forgot to text that, actually text back to that person. That could happen with us and we take the rejection personally when it's like that person was probably just busy when you sent the message. And, but they would have loved to join your challenge group. So you have to follow up. But now when you speak to somebody, you have to be really interested in them. I think that today's society, we try so hard to be interesting. When it's really about being interested in the other person, what are you up to? How is your family? How's work? What do you like about your job? You know, where do you hope to be in a year? Like those are weird questions, but people like to talk about themselves. You know, we usually don't have people that ask us genuine questions. And I'm not going to tell you guys to be fake because I know Gabby and I know the type of team that Gabby attracts. And I know that you guys genuinely want to care for people. I know there are definitely coaches out there in the network who are you know, really don't care. They only have their own agenda. But I know when I speak to you guys, I know that you guys generally want to help. So I'm, I'm not even going to mention that. But you guys, your care for the person has to go in deeper than just the invitation. So you want to have a conversation with the person. Every time I form somebody, I'm famous on with my personally sponsored coaches for not having a script. And Sometimes I worry that it's something that holds me back, but I know that for me, it's been a strength because I always get somebody on the phone. When we go, when we take that relationship to the next level where they're interested in a challenge group or they're interested in the business opportunity, I always take it to the phone because text messaging cannot convey the, the enthusiasm in your voice, the passion in your voice. They need to hear it. And you're asking someone to spend a couple hundred, you know, one to two hundred dollars on you. So you might as well give them your time and let them hear a voice that they can trust in spending their money with you. So I always, 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 even if I'm terrified, and this is me literally before I got on the phone with someone, when I'm dialing someone, I take a deep breath and I'm like, <sighs> because I'm scared, but it's something that I have to do. And especially now that everybody that joins my challenge groups is someone that's completely in my cold market. You know, it was easier, obviously, when it was like my cousin. I'm like, yeah, girls, just sign up. Just go to my page, sign up. Because when I signed up, I, we didn't have the Coach Mobile app yet. So I, I would just say like, oh, you're going to love this. Just sign up. Just go to my page, sign up. Um, but now I, I get on the phone with them. And in my mind, what works for me is to pretend that person's my best friend. Because if I, if I put the pressure in my head that what am I going to say and how am I going to say it and how am I going to segue into the pitch, for me, it's like I'm talking to my best friend. So I'll do a little research into their page. I'll look at their Instagram. I'll look on their Facebook, the type of posts that they pick. And I'll just say something like, oh, my gosh, so I saw that you were at the park with your kids yesterday. Where is that park? I always look for a park like that to take my kids. And, you know, I take it from there. What can we connect on? That's what I always look for. What can we connect on? So it's a genuine conversation. So I listen a lot. And if you guys are, have a pen and paper with you, write down what you hear. I had a conversation with a coach. I was helping her form because she read to me a conversation that she sent to somebody. And I'm like, no, you're leading with your agenda. And then I, I formed her. And forming her, I found out all these things about her that she wasn't even realizing were part of her journey. You know, she's somebody that she's an interior designer. She works on Fifth Avenue with like really rich high-end clients, but she's always been like this chubby girl and it made her feel really insecure. So if I would have just said to her, if I was her coach and I would have just said to her, hey, I'm having a challenge group, will you join my team? It would have been so easy because of her schedule for her to say, you know what, I really don't have time for that. I'm going to try to make it to the gym. But because I had that conversation with her and I listened to her and everything she told me, I heard her say, you know, I, I, sometimes I, I get really insecure because, you know, the, the way these people look at me, the way they're dressed, and I want to be, make sure that I feel good in my clothes and it, it comes across in my confidence level when I'm having meetings with them. I heard all of that. And as she's telling me, she's like, girl, because I said something about the Fifth Avenue and I'm like, but you have Starbucks. She's like, girl, I live on Starbucks. I drink like five coffees a day because I need the energy to keep up with my clients because it's a lot of running around to their offices. I heard all of that. I wasn't right away like, oh, by the way, Shakeology is going to give you energy. I let her talk and I just collected data. 
So that's what you guys are going to do. You listen and you collect the data. So then when we, when I even get, sometimes I even let it get to the point when they say to me, okay, so what is it that you do? Because I'd love to join you. And then I break it down. And this is, I don't have a script, but this is what I always say to them. I always tell them, so what you're going to do is that I ask them, first of all, have you ever heard of insanity or P90X? And chances are that they'll say yes. And I've had like 75% of the people that I've formed tell me that they have insanity, but it's collecting dust on a shelf. And I'll say to them, it's probably collecting dust on a shelf, right? And they're like, yeah, I did one DVD and I never kept it up. And I'm like, well, the great thing is that in Beachbody, we have a lot of different programs catered to a lot of different lifestyles, different goals. And so what you're going to do is that you're going to join my challenge group. To join my challenge group, you get a challenge pack. I'm going to match you to a program that's going to help meet your goals of X, Y, and Z. And I'm going to repeat to them what I heard and why I think that that program is going to be great for them. And then I tell them, and you're going to get Shakeology included with that. And that's a healthy meal replacement shake. So this girl that told me about the five cups of coffee a day, and I say to her, you remember how you told me about the five cups of coffee? I promise you won't need them with Shakeology. It's going to help you feel better. You're going to be fuller. You're going to get that meal that you know is going to be solid, even though you're running around without time to really eat. And you're going to get me. And I want you guys to say, say that with confidence because you're the difference why people join your challenge group and not just decide to do it on their own or join another coach because they saw value in you. They saw the way that your life is changing, how happy you are, how you're always on top of your game. Even if you're not at your goal weight, they see what you're doing and they're inspired and motivated by you. So they need to know that they have you and that you've got their back. So I tell them, and then you join my challenge group which is a private accountability group on Facebook where every day I'm looking for you to post a, a sweaty workout pic. I'm looking to see your meals, pictures of your meals. I want you to weigh in every Monday and we're going to track your progress every step of the way. And I sound a little tough when I say that because if you guys think about like biggest losers, people want like a tough ass on them. You know, like they like Jillian Michaels because she'll like get on their case and scream at them. Like that's why people join boot camps. Like they want to be screamed at. So they want to know that if they join you, like, wow, I'm getting all this stuff while I'm getting Shakeology and wow, you're going to be my coach. You know, all of a sudden you communicated all this value. So when they ask you, okay, how much is it? My answer always is, well, it ranges. It ranges from $205 to $140. I start with the higher price program just because they're going to be like, well, that's a little pricey. But then they hear $140 and they're like, okay, I could totally do that for everything you just mentioned. I could totally do that. But it depends on the conviction in your voice and when you say that. Because if they hear like, oh, you know, it's $140. They pick up on that. So if you don't sound confident, they're not going to be confident in trusting you to put down their credit card number on a website. So you have to have the posture to say, and it's only $140, you know? And if you don't believe it, like if any of you on this call right now have any objection about Shakeology because you think it's, you think it's expensive, that's going to come off in the way you, you present it. It's going to come off and they're going to pick up on it and think it's expensive too. So when they give you that objection, you're going to quiver under that objection. So you guys have to be solid. That's why the personal development is so important. That's why trainings are so important because you got to believe in what you stand for with this product. You have to, that's why in the beginning, my first month as a coach, sweetie, I'm on the phone. Aw, go to bed. My first month as a coach, um, I was actually one of the top challenge pack sales in the company. And that was because I was, I was still in my challenge group and I was so excited and I believed in this hundred percent. You know, I had tried gyms, I had tried trainers and all of that, but I'm like, this stuff really works. And I wanted everyone to know it. So I had the confidence in what it was doing when I was inviting people. So you guys need to tap into that and have that confidence when you invite people. Now, let's change gears into inviting to the coaching opportunity. It works the same way in terms of you really listening to the people that you're talking to, especially if they're, I'm sorry, babe.
when you have uh, challengers in your challenge group, you want to pay attention to the ones that are really motivating. The ones that are the, one, the first ones to like comment on other people's things. You know that's a coach. You know that's a coach. Um, so you want to pay attention to them. And right before the month is over, I typically message them like, How is go how's it going on Shakeology? Do you love it? Oh my God, I love it. Like, hey, have you ever thought about becoming a coach? And then you let them answer and they'll tell you a number of things. Um, but you could always tell them like, you know, you can get Shakeology on a discount if you love it. And then you could, you could earn income by helping other people when they see your transformation. But what I have been doing is this, and I'm going to ask you guys to step up to the plate and do this yourselves. You know, ever since Leadwell Legacy started doing the coaching opportunity, I have a version of that myself. So when I invite people to the coaching opportunity, I do it Eric Worre style, which is Hey, you know, I'm working on, I'm, I'm really excited. My team's doing great. I'm looking to expand my team. If I sent you a video, would you watch it? And then what, and then everyone says yes. Cause they watch you. They watch what you're doing and they're curious. Even if they don't think they're doing you're they're, you're, they're, they'll, they'll ever do it. They'll want to check it out. So I send them the link to my presentation. And then we schedule a date for them to watch it and schedule a date for a follow-up phone call. But I even send it to coaches in my challenge group so that they could see the full, the full, you know, all the possibilities. So, sorry. They're fighting and killing each other. Um, so I'm, I want to challenge all of you guys to step up to the plate and don't be shy. It doesn't matter where you are in your business. It doesn't matter if you're just a coach or you're an emerald, it's on the way you present yourself. Where do you believe you're going to be in the business from a year from now? Like you have to present yourself like you're a big deal because other people aren't going to know better. Other people aren't going to know better. So if you're a brand new baby coach, like I always remember at, at Summit, Lindsay Matway said when she became a coach that she told people like, I'm taking this to the top, you know, and she was a brand new coach when she did that. She was a brand new coach when she did that. So you guys also have to have that posture, that confidence in yourself in this opportunity. A lot of times we're scared. And I know I did that at first. I kind of had this veil between what I did in my fitness challenges and the business side of it. Because I was a little scared to offer the business opportunity to people. And you guys can't be. Like, raise your hands if you're super excited to be a coach. Yeah, that's, that's like all of you guys. So... You guys can't be scared to show the same enthusiasm that you have for your fitness groups um, and inviting people to the business opportunity. So when you do that, like every little thing you, you guys can think of that you can celebrate in your life as a coach, like how positive you are, how you get to help people, how you have the sisterhood in this team right now, how this is how you spend your Thursday nights. That's awesome. That, that's, thing, that's things that you want to share. I mean, look at these three right now having an awesome time because they're coaches. You know, other people don't have that. And especially the Sapphires would love to join something like that. So don't be shy to post because a lot of the coaching opportunity is you educating people on what the lifestyle is of a coach. Because before I became a coach, I thought I had to get like certified by Beachbody. I thought I needed permission from Beachbody to do things. I thought I had to be a trainer, take nutrition courses. I thought it took a lot of time and it had to be like a full-time thing. But I was wrong. So how many people could be watching you wondering if they could coach, but thinking that there are these barriers between what you do and what they could do? So I encourage you, post about the business opportunity as much as you post about the fitness opportunity, especially if you want to grow. Like, for example, where Gabby and I are in our business and Elena and Melky also, it's you want to post more about the business opportunity because now it's time to really grow beyond Diamond and really grow a solid team. So it's kind of like fake it till you make it, you know, you, you present yourself in, in that light to people and then people will be attracted to that. So when you invite someone like, Hey, you know, I, I noticed that you posted about wanting to do more with your life or trying to get involved in something more positive. I'm looking to expand my team. If I sent you a web, a link to a video I did, would you watch it? And then they're going to say yes. 
and then the video closes everything. Gabby can share with you guys the slides. It's in the back office. But I encourage you all, if you guys have Zoom, which I know you do, obviously, you guys can just record yourselves and record the slides and have your own version. So when you talk to people, you send them yourselves. And that takes a lot of pressure off of yourself too to do it live, to explain the coaching opportunity live. If you have this go-to third-party tool, then you could just always use it and give it to people when inviting them to the coaching opportunity. And even coaches in your downline, they could use the same one. And you can help them close people with this presentation. So just in the same way that you bring this posture and this positivity to your challenge groups, you have to bring the posture and the positivity to what you do as a coach in this business and be proud of it and help that come off in in the way you form people. And also my last tip for that is to collect stories. So a lot of times I'll speak to people who let's say are teachers and I'm not a teacher. I don't have a background in teaching. So I, I can't really relate to what they go through, but I collect stories of coaches on my team who have. So when I speak to them, I tell them I'm able to talk about my story, but I could also say, yeah, you know, this person was a teacher and now they're a full-time coach. I'm able to share their story. So we also have to be really good at story collecting so that we're able to give them that perspective that they're looking for because, you know, facts tell, stories sell. And all we are are really great storytellers. From your own social media to your, the way you talk to people, tell a great story. And we're writing one. So that's what we're doing right now. We're writing a great story so we're able to keep sharing it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Um, that was a lot of information. I'm sure everyone uh, was really excited to hear all the tips and all your tricks. Um, and don't worry about the boys. I'm surprised my son hasn't come in here. He always... I was waiting for him. He's on every team call. <laughs> right. <laughs> he is. He is. Um, maybe he'll come to the leader. But um, I actually wanted to say to the ladies um, that Audrey is so successful in this business. You know, um, obviously many of you know she is in the world. Right. And as she mentioned, she joined her father's business. And in less than three years, you know, she is yeah. making a six figure income with everybody. Um, and he is, you know, working a full-time job. So it is possible because I know that many of you on this call um, are not, you know, a stay-at-home mom like myself and Melky. That you guys have full-time doing this part-time. So you know, the possibilities are, like they say, the sky's the limit. So, um, you have a few minutes in case the girls have any questions. Yeah, of course, of course. You have any questions for? Yes. Audrey? Hi, Audrey. Hi. <laughs> um, so earlier you said, I, I don't know why I have like, like I, I always get confused with this. So I am okay on like building relationships and like talking to people and like I'm okay with that. I think the hard part for me is knowing when or how to invite. So like, I think earlier you mentioned something about um, when you invite, you don't necessarily like just thank you does that mean that you like reach out to people the first time you reach out to them as an invite or does that mean that you reach out to them as a, like hey how you doing kind of thing you know what i mean I, it's always 99.9% .9 of the time it's a hey how you doing because okay. I want to open up the lines of communication with the person. Because trust to me is the reason why people join me. Trust to me is everything. So I, I don't want to just message someone I haven't spoken to in a while just to invite them to a challenge group. Okay. I, I open up the line of communication. Unless it's something like, like I invited one old friend from high school because she literally posted, I need to lose the baby weight. I was looking into T25. Has anyone tried it? There you jump in. Okay. <laughs> You know, there you jump in. Unless it's like obvious and you know, like the person's been posting about needing fitness advice, you know, because you pay, I pay attention. I know you're not supposed to get lost in Facebook land, but I'd like to pay attention to what people are doing. Okay. Because that helps me to know 
you know, what am I going to, what am I going to say to them? I call, I actually call this flirting. This to me is called flirting. Cause I like, like a picture. I comment on a picture. I message them. And there's like that little dance back and forth. Um, and then that helps me because I always hit success club because of it, because all throughout the month I have different people and stages in that pipeline that keeps my pipeline full. And I, and it, it, like, for instance, I'm at success club 20. So while I have people that could join my challenge group right now, but because I still have them in that relationship, I know that come September, I can fully invite them to a challenge group. So what does that look like? Like at the very beginning of your coaching experience, like, you know what I mean? Like at this point, you're obviously very successful. So you have people at different stages of your pop pipeline, but what, which is awesome. But what does that look like at the very beginning? Is it just a lot of relationship building without success club or like, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, it is a lot of relationship building without success club because I don't want more than 20 points for this month already. So I, I keep them there. So I mean like at the very beginning of, a of my coaching journey, your coaching journey. I had a really large warm market. Okay. So for me, I was like heavy. You know, we all start like that. Like everything is fitness. Everything is nutrition on our Facebook page. So I was very much that, that newbie coach that did that. Um, so it's like everyone I would talk to was about a challenge group and they knew me and I, like I said, I had a large warm market and everyone I knew needed to lose weight. So they, I was lucky that they all did join me. Okay. Um, but I had to do like when for that transition for me, but I always paid attention to, to Dalisa's tips and Saudi's tips about constantly adding people on Instagram. So I was always scared of that. It was always in the back of my head. Like, what am I going to do when my warm market taps out? Mm -hmm. I have to hit this thing called success club. So I was always adding people, always adding people, always adding people. And since I was always posting about fitness, I, I would like invite people right there, right then and there on Instagram. But then as time went on, I realized like, I'm like that icky person because it's like when I started, there was probably, I, I think there were like 200,000 coaches in the network. Now there are 350,000 coaches in the network. And I saw this surge of coaches that would go to other people's pages. Like if you posted a picture doing T25, I see like a whole slew of coaches posting like, join my challenge group. Do you have a coach? Do you have a coach? Like, I don't want to be that icky person. And you hear of a lot of people that like pressure and bombard people to join their challenge groups to the point where like that person gets blocked and it gives the whole company a bad rep. I don't want to be that person. So that's why like the relationship building is so important to me. So that, 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 that shift happened gradually for me. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Did that answer your question? It did. Okay. <laughs> so we have Anna in route to Vegas. <laughs> and so she uh, sent me a question for you because she can't talk on the phone uh, on, on the plane because then they'll tell her to disconnect. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so she says um, she wants to know how you handle objections when you're ready to close and then the individual turns around and don't buy? So the price objection to me, it doesn't scare me because I, I kind of, and I learned this from Danny Johnson. If you guys want to be really good at handling objections, listen to Danny Johnson. I, I even went to First Steps to Success and saw her live and I was surprised at the way she just breaks down people's objections. Because if you do a good job listening to them, then you can call them out on their BS. So with the price objection, and this, is hard, this was hard for me to do. I've learned to do it. I just, say to, I just say to them, so you weren't serious about losing weight? You know, so is it that you don't really value what you can get out of this? And it's scary to say, but I do say it to people. And then if they tell me like, oh, I don't think I have time for that. I, I hear that a few times. I say to them, so again, so you're really not serious about changing your body. Like carving out an extra half an hour of your day is too much for you. Like I, I repeat it to them so they see how stupid it sounds. You know, um, 
But I will tell you one thing. Wait, repeat, repeat those. Oh, I say to them, so, you know, you don't have the time to work out. So working on yourself isn't that important to you or getting more energy isn't that important to you. Okay, so only $140, that's not worth you feeling better about yourself, more confident, having the energy and feeling good in front of your husband like you told me you wanted to. Um, and it's hard to say to people, but it's just going to make them feel stupid if they're really giving you an excuse. Sometimes people have valid excuses to not join right now. Like they could be people that legitimately don't have the money and really want to do it. So in those cases, and you can kind of tell cause you, the, the, the way the conversation goes, if it's flowing well and that person's honest, they'll tell you like, listen, I really, really want to do this. Can we stay in touch? Can you send me that email? Maybe next Friday I can buy it. Can you follow up with me then? And then, yeah, you put them on the list to follow up. But if they're like, ah, oh, let me think about it, then you try to call them out. But let me tell you something. Next. That's, that's the way I've learned to do things. Because if you're speaking to enough people in a month, that's not going to make or break you. If, if it's that you're not inviting that often, you're not talking to that many people, then you get hung up on that person and then they could tell that you're waiting for them to buy. And that's even more of a turnoff. But meanwhile, if you treat it like, okay, great. Well, my challenge group starts on this date. You need your challenge pack by then. And if you can't, then I'm going to put you on the list for my next challenge. I'm going to put you on the waiting list for my next challenge group because you have to make yourself seem like a really big deal. Like you would love for them to join right now, but you know, your challenge group's about to fill up. So maybe next month. And then next month will come around and they're going to ask you like, hey, do you still have that, that spot in your challenge group for me? You know, you have to just make sure that you're talking to enough people so that if they give you an objection, you're not so personally attached to the outcome so that you're able to really call them out on it because, hello, you're ridiculous if you don't want to join this opportunity or just keep it moving because they just don't get it, you know? She had a follow-up question to, to your response. Mm -hmm. so her follow-up question is, um, and I think I know what your answer is going to be, but just so that she can hear it from you, um, does that push people away, your, you know, that tough love? Not at all. <sighs> Unfortunately, so many people li live in an excuse land. And ultimately what we want to do is educate people on what their life could be if they stop making excuses for themselves. And we see that now, like, I don't know about you guys, but now when I talk to certain people that aren't like beach body coaches and I hear the excuses that come out of their mouths for why they're not where they want to be, I'm just blown away by it. But people on in that beginning journey, when they're starting out, they don't even realize it because they hear it from everyone else that they're around, the same excuses. So if you, who they see has their life together and you're so happy and doing great, if, you, if you're just like, really? You know, it's gonna make them question themselves. And I've had people tell me that. You know, like they might not have joined that moment, but they'll say to you, you know, that conversation that we had, it really got me thinking about my life, my nutrition, and they'll come around. If they're meant to be, in your challenge group and you're meant to be their coach, they'll come around. But um, you just don't want to seem desperate. That, and that tends to happen if we're not talking to enough people. She's that good. pushes people away. He loves your tough love. <laughs> Thanks. Um, does anyone else have any questions for Audrey? I have a question for you. Um, what do you, tell your coaches um you know at every stage of where they are because i think it should you know i personally think it should remain um the same that you know how many amount uh, or the amount of people that they should be talking to uh, whether that's building relationships or inviting daily i tell them that they should make at least two new contacts a day and by make two contacts is like, you better have had a conversation like on Instagram or on a Facebook thread with this new person, at least two new people a day. 
you have to get in because it's our job to get in front of people. It's back to putting on that marketing hat and get in front of people. Get two new people to notice you and your page and make sure you said something to them um, so they know who you are now. And now you're on their radar. At least two people a day. But things, other things like Instagram, adding people every day, that, that doesn't count, but that's something that you should do every day. Anyway, like make sure that you're sitting wherever you're sitting just sit there, follow, 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 max it out until Instagram doesn't let you anymore. But that doesn't count as personally connecting with two people. So connecting with two people, that's building relationship, but that has nothing to do with inviting. No. How many people are they talking to, you know, um, in terms of the invitation process? how many people they should be talking to in the invitation process? Right. Um, on a daily basis. Uh, Jesus, at least five, <laughs> at least five. You should be having conversations with at least five people a day on joining your next challenge group or joining your, your business as a coach. And it's funny because when you're, and I'm, I'm sure Gabby has that tracker. Kim created this tracker where you have to keep track of how many people you're talking to. And you have to fill it out for corporate, you know, because it helps you assess your business. So I always, you know, especially because I have to hand it out, I personally have to keep myself in check. Am I really talking to as many people as it's my goal to talk to? You know, so... It's just like, so if I'm at Success Club 20 and on average it takes, you know, it, it takes 10 people before it says no, then how many people did I talk to this month? You know? Yeah. Audrey, so I, oh, sorry, do you have one more, one more question? Yeah, of course. Um, so it is more than clear to me at this point, <laughs> if ever before, that this is all about building relationships and people being a people person. Yes. Um, you said you were an introvert in the beginning. And I still am. You still are. And I know I can relate to that. And also I, I'm in a job and this might be an excuse. I'll own this, but I'm in a job where I come home and I'm like exhausted from dealing, you know, just real dealing with people's issues all day long. So what kind of personal development would you recommend as an introvert and as someone who can feel just emotionally drained after a long day of work? That would be good to help like continue to build these kind of relationships with people, like strength. To tell you the truth, I wouldn't even say personal development at that point. I would say you need some you time because as an introvert, I know that it's just that you feel overwhelmed and you can't take anything else. So when I talk about the energy level with which you need to speak to people, you're not, you're not going to be in the right place right. to speak to someone. So if you need to develop a routine for yourself and I'm the same way, like I always laugh when people say like, Oh, I'm not a morning person. Cause I, I don't necessarily believe in that. But if I can relate in any way, it's that when I get home from work, I need at least five minutes to myself, you know, because I need to, as an introvert, I need to decompress. So I would say that it's for you establishing a routine where you do something for you when you get home. So you can just kind of like let that off your shoulders, okay. you know, something to make Elena happy where you feel that you can breathe again and you can recharge yourself again. So what makes you happy? If you want to get home and put on some music and do a little dance by yourself <laughs> to get back to your right state of energy, then do that. Okay. You know? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Cool. Thank you, Audrey. I don't think anyone else, does anyone else have questions? No. Okay, cool. Thank you so much for spending your Thursday evening with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on. We had her twice before the Jamal Nacional. I told her that. <laughs> I said, yay, before, before everybody else has Audrey, we had her twice. So, but thank you so much. Wait, puppy, wait.
Thank you so much for, you know, spending the night with us. <laughs> and my pleasure. And all your tips. Okay. Be gonna bye-bye, puppy. Be gonna bye-bye. Look, he showed up. He's not having it. Yeah, he's not happy. But thank you. Um, thank you. You're great on the call, girl. You're amazing. You're all listening, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and guys, remember to get on early because they're giving away. Cheryl was telling me they've got a lot of great programs. It's Spanish that they're giving away. So you guys got to get on a little earlier to be able to join the contest and, you know, those questions that they asked before the call. So make sure you guys get on early to get those programs. Cool. Awesome. Thank you again for all the tips. They were wonderful. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye, guys. Yeah. Bye. Bye.